Happy Tinkermas, everyone. <laughs> I am Blake Swenson, co-founder of Tinker Camp. You know, through the years of running Tinker Camp and going to doing shows and pop-up maker things all over the city, I get a lot of questions about what uh, about the products that we use in the camp and or whatever else. Um, and parents ask me where I got them, and how much they cost, and so on. So I thought I'd touch bases on a couple of those. Uh, some recommendations. So um, if you're planning on buying something for your tinker, you could, um, you know, find something that might be appropriate. So the uh, first item, oh, let me just talk about uh, where we buy our things first. Um, I use Amazon almost exclusively, not because I love Amazon or even appreciate what they do, Leviathan out there, just simply because we have um, Amazon Prime and it you know saves us a lot of money on shipping uh, we purchase all the time and and so uh, it really over a period of a year makes a big difference um, so with that being said uh, there are a, a lot of different places out there to buy these products and you don't necessarily have to shop at Amazon if you have a fav favorite one you can go there so get back to the first product the one that we bought this year uh, was this little uh, scribbler or SAM2 3D pen. Now 3D pen is uh, basically a little hot element at the end of a pen and you put a plastic filament inside here and it allows you to squeeze it out and draw in three dimensions. It's, it's a great starter thing and if someone's interested in 3D printing and you can't afford a 3D printer, which that's me, so, um, you know, a 3D pen is a kind of a good solution. Now, this one um, comes under two brands, uh, brand names, a Sam 2 and um, a Scribbler. It's the same pen. Um, and what I really super like about this pen, first of all, it's price point. You know, it's uh, under $60. The second thing I like about this is that it has some features that the more advanced, more expensive model just don't have. Like for instance, it's got an unload button. Um, that means that when you load the filament inside the pen, you can uh, press one of these buttons to unload it, uh, and that makes changing color really easy. Um, with uh, the three doodler and some others, you have to kind of pull the thing out, and it, it's messy and, and so on. So I really like that idea. And then um, also it has a speed control that feeds the the hot uh, plastic out at a slower or faster pace. So if you're drawing in, in an upward, uh, you know, drawing upward into space, then um, this one becomes really, uh, really important because you can adjust the speed and and makes it easier to control. So those two things I really super like about the pen. Now the pen isn't really durable, so for our camps. These actually didn't work very well because we broke them pretty quickly because we were running them all the time. Um, but for home use, I think it would be a perfectly good solution, especially considering its price point. So, Sam 2 or the Scribbler, same pen, uh, price point around 50 bucks. Great uh, thing to buy. Oh, it also comes with um, the filament, with colored filament, so you can start right away. And then uh, you can use uh, the standard filament that's used for all the 3D printers. The same diameter, right? So the filaments have different diameters. And uh, you can use the same diameter as used for a standard 3D printer, which, uh, uh, which makes it really inexpensive to buy. Where other ones, you have to buy these sticks, they're different uh, diameter, and so on. So this makes a really good solution. All right, so we don't really use these in the camp very much, but I get questions about them all the time. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about this little guy the uh, Makey Makey. Now, uh, the Makey Makey basically is just a USB device that you plug into your computer and it replaces the motion of the uh, cursor keys, up and, or up and down keys, and then the space bar, or the click button uh, on your mouse. So what this allows you to do then is to control the computer by attaching this guy with clips or wires or whatever to things around you. So you can play a game using Play-Doh knobs that you've made or uh, play the keyboard using bananas. That's the classic example. So the Makey Makey is a really great, inexpensive, 
beginning tool that you can get into quickly uh, that your kid can um, really relate to and that allows them to start thinking about the computing world in terms of what's around them as well as what's on the screen. Great item. Um, these run between 30 and 50 bucks depending on what kit you get with them and uh, there's some knockoffs. This particular one is a knockoff as well but um, you know it just depends on uh, what you buy but they're available uh, uh, you know across uh, the uh, the internet and also locally. I've seen these at Radio Shack. I've seen them even at Fred Meyer. So um, really a ubiquitous sort of uh, tool, great little thing to start with. Um, now, the one I get most questions about, this is, uh, well, which I never would have thought, but these zip snips, these are the things that we use to cut cardboard in our can. Um, but they are designed to cut material, uh, vinyl, so on, even carpet. Um, these little guys are just a circular little cutter with a circular saw in them, um, as you can see when I turn it around there. Um, and um, they're just a really easy way to cut cardboard, and a lot, a lot easier than using scissors, and a lot less damaging to your table than using a, a cardboard knife or box knife. Uh, so this one is the one that we like the best. This is the, um, the Zip Snip. Um, it's uh, it's the, actually made by the Zip Snip company. Um, it, uh, it uses a, uh, has a safety bar at the bottom that you squeeze with your hand and then you press the trigger on top. That turns on the little saw. The saw is self-sharpening and it can also be replaced. There's replacement saws and the, the anvil, that's this part underneath, it's called the anvil, that's replaceable. So it, it will last for a long, long time, especially if you let the battery run completely out before you charge it again. Now, that being said, this guy is like 70 bucks. So it's kind of out of reach for what kind of a tool it is. Um, but it, for small hands, it's by far the most superior of the two products um, because a, a smaller hand can grab onto this and just squeeze it like they're squeezing the handle and activate the, uh, the cutter. This one is much less expensive. It's made by skill. It works on the same sort of principle with the, the rotating saw. It has a very similar anvil. Um, and uh, self-sharpening, just like the zip snip, uh, but um, and it's a lot less expensive, like twenty dollars less expensive. But the problem with this thing is that it has these safety buttons on the side. You can either press it this way or press it with your thumb from the other side. This little guy, um, for a smaller hand, it becomes really hard to manipulate uh, because you have to press the safety and the trigger um, with your with the same hand and so for a smaller hand this thing can be kind of complicated to, to work but for an older kid it works just fine and the price point makes it a little bit uh, reasonable. Now both of these companies um, make a newer model of these um, like I said we've had these in the camp for a while um, this, this one has paint on it and everything but anyway so uh, the, uh, the company, Skill makes one that's more like a drill handle, it's like a gun handle, and um, it, the cutting head is removable so you can uh, turn it into a grill, drill or so on. So, uh, and that's a little less expensive than this. I haven't tried it, but it could work for you. Um, Rockwell was the originating company that made this. Rockwell has come out with a zip snip. It's spelled a little differently, but it's made by Rockwell, and it's almost exactly the same thing, except for that it has a rounded shield on the bottom to protect your hand if you're doing carpet or something like that. Uh, less expensive. So look for those. Those are available, like I say, via Amazon. Um, but definitely the zip snip, if you can afford it, that's the better of the two. The skill one is good as well, um, but um, it's a little bit harder to use. Now, uh, here's a couple of products that um, 
that we use a lot and I recommend a lot, but they're not very glamorous. Like the Zip Snip is pretty makey makey, really glamorous. These are not glamorous, but they're so useful for a kid who's using a lot of construction products, uh, wood, glue, cardboard, stuff like that. It uh, is the bar clamp or, or, or some other sort of clamp. So here's an example of his little tiny bar clamp from Harbor Freight. This little guy is, uh, you know, a uh, bar clamp has a bar, as you can see, and then you squeeze this to move this into position, turn this to tighten uh, on your product. Now, why this is important is because this can be a third hand. Uh, having trouble holding the wood to your, uh, your cutting, uh, you know, your saw horses, well, this can help. You're having a hard time keeping two pieces of wood together until the glue dries. This uh, is a really good product. So, uh, for, it's not very, like I say, it's not very glamorous, but the upside of this is that they're really super inexpensive, too. Uh, clamps range in all kinds of different sizes. Here's one that's, I don't know, two feet long. This one's just uh, less than a foot long. Um, and they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but they're not very expensive. You can get into one for less than two bucks. Um, I also uh, kind of like this one uh, for some very smaller projects. So this is just a, a, what they call a speed clamp that releases it and uh, it clamps onto something, um, you know, like cardboard or uh, popsicle sticks or something like that. That would be a good clamp for that. Again, very inexpensive, uh, available at Harbor Freight is where the, I got these. All right. Finally, this, this prod, these products are the ones I get uh, the second most questions about. Um, because uh, when we're talking about doing electronics projects, it's really hard to find those little things that to start out with. So uh, why would you, you know, uh, you know, buy a bunch of electronics for for a kid who's just starting out um, and learning how to just solder stuff together or something like that? So um, uh, sourcing those uh, those little items on a one-two basis is pretty hard. Um, so I get questions about where did I get this thing or that thing uh, that we're using, mainly about these two items. One is the LEDs. Now this is a little box, LEDs, uh, you can see, um, different colors. Uh, this box is about $12. It's from, um, our, from uh, Am I bought it from Am on Amazon. But also, there's 800 LEDs in here. So bang for your buck, this thing is super good. Right? And there's little ones and big ones, different colors. So it's a really good starter pack to, to get going with LEDs. Now, in order to make an LED work, of course, you need a battery. And that's where these little um, batteries come, right? These are these little coin batteries, the 2032 uh, little coin batteries, or sometimes they're called hearing aid batteries. Um, these things can be really expensive. They can be like five bucks for three. And, um, and so, uh, you know, if you're going to the, your local store to buy these, um, you know, you can kind of get worked out about the price of them, especially if your kid's going through them at a, at a rate. So what I do is I buy these uh, five packs. There's five packs of five of these batteries. I get it from Amazon, and they're about seven bucks. So really good value um, if you buy them in bulk like this. Anyway, so those are the items uh, that I want to talk about. The, uh, the little Sam 2 3D pen, the Makey Makey clamps, the little cutters that we use for cardboard, and then where to get electronics. So if you have any of the questions, please uh, send me an email. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And, of course, Merry Tinkermas, everybody.